In this Microsoft Word tutorial, I would like to show you my favorite Microsoft Word keyboard shortcuts, the ones that I find to be most useful. And to start off, I just want to acknowledge some of the most common keyboard shortcuts, and these are usable in almost every program, and that's Control C, X, and V for copy, cut, and paste, and then also Control Z to undo a mistake. Okay, so let's say I would like to undo that, Control Z and then control Y to redo whatever you've undone. So those are some basic keyboard shortcuts that everyone should know. They're usable in almost every program that you're gonna use. But let's look beyond those for my favorite and most useful Microsoft Word keyboard shortcuts. The first one is Quick Save. And we all know how important it is to save often. Whenever you make big, significant changes, it's a good idea to save. But instead of having to take your hand off the keyboard and going up and clicking the Save button here to quick save, you can simply hold Control and tap S, and that performs a quick save. There's a similar shortcut to quickly print. If I hold Control and tap P, it brings up the print options, and I can change these options if I'd like to, and then click Print. So Control S and Control P those are some good, easy time savers. Another easy, simple keyboard shortcut is the F7 key. If you tap F7, it brings up the spelling and grammar check. So Word has found four spelling mistakes for me in my document and nine grammar suggestions. Another keyboard shortcut I use all the time in Microsoft Word is Control F. Control F opens up the Find panel, or what they call Navigation panel. So here in the navigation search box, I can type in a word and it will try to locate it in my document. This is especially useful if you have a big document, maybe a research paper or a master's thesis or something like that, that you're working on. You've got thousands and thousands of words and let's say you've made a mistake. Maybe you've used the wrong terminology in your paper and you want to find all instances of the mistake. You could just type in the word and it will identify all of the instances of that word. The next three keyboard shortcuts have to do with text formatting. When you're typing in Microsoft Word, anytime you take your hands off the keyboard, you've just lost some efficiency, you've wasted some time. And so to help with that, there are three keyboard shortcuts that make it so that you don't have to come up here and click bold, italics, and underline. So I'm going to undo the underlining here in my title, which really isn't necessary anyway. And I'm going to erase the title and pretend like I'm typing it for the first time. Instead of going up and clicking to underline that text or to italicize the text, all I have to do is hold the control key and tap U for underline. I start typing and you can see the text is coming in underlined. If I want to stop the underlining, I hold control and I tap U again. Now, nothing new will be underlined. It works similarly for bold. Control B gives me bold text, just like that. And Control I gives me italicized text. Now, of course, if I don't undo, in this case, bold, then my italics will be bolded and italicized. And so you have to remember to turn off the italics if you don't want them to continue. Same with underlining and same with bold. My next favorite keyboard shortcut in Microsoft Word is automatic page break. Everyone has at one point or another gone into Word, put the cursor where you want a page to end, and then tapped enter several times to move the rest of the text down to the next page. That is really unnecessary. You don't have to tap enter, you know, 15 times to get your text to the right place. Instead, if you want to end this page right here, and break it and start a new page below, all you have to do is hold the control key and tap enter. And you can see what that did. It ended the page. It's broken. This page is broken here and the new page begins down below on page two in this case. Another very useful keyboard shortcut for Microsoft Word is F4. Now what does F4 do? F4 will repeat whatever you've most recently done. So if I tap delete or backspace a few times, and then if I tap the F4 key, look what happens. It continues to delete. Whatever you most recently did will be continued if you tap F4. So another example, if I type the word hello and then a space, if I then tap F4, look, 
hello space, hello, hello, hello. It just repeats whatever you just recently did. So F4 is kind of an interesting one. It just repeats whatever action you've just done over and over and over every time you tap F4. The next keyboard shortcut is Shift F5. Holding the Shift key and tapping F5. What does that do? Well, it takes you back to wherever your cursor last was. So let me give you an example. Let's say I want to copy a paragraph that's toward the bottom of this document. And I want to paste it back up there toward the top where all of those hellos were. So I'm going to highlight this text, this whole sentence. I'll copy it with Control C, and then I'll hold Shift and tap F5, and it takes me right back up to all of the hellos. And now I can do Control V to paste in that sentence. So Shift F5, it's a great way to jump back to where you were previously working. Very useful. Another useful tool that we have is Shift Left or Shift Right. Now let me give you an example of when that would be useful. In previous videos, I've shown you that a double click on a word highlights a word, and a triple click on a word highlights either the sentence or the paragraph, depending on the program that you're using. So double click highlights the word, triple click highlights, in this case, the paragraph. And that's very useful. If I want to copy this whole paragraph now, I can do Control C to copy it. Or if I want to copy a word, I can just double click on the word, Control C to copy that word. And then I can paste it with Control V. But what if you're clicking and dragging, or maybe you're double clicking, and you want to extend what is highlighted before you copy it? What if I wish it included classes and two years? I can hold the Shift key and then tap the right arrow key. And look, it's extending the highlighted text in two years. Okay, that's exactly what I want. Now I can copy it and paste it. So that way you don't have to click and drag again to try to get exactly what you want. Just double click on the first word and then hold shift, tap the right arrow to extend it as far as you want to go. Now the left arrow takes you back the other direction and extends to the left. But that can be a very useful keyboard shortcut in Microsoft Word. Next, we have Control Shift C. And what does this do? We know that Control C copies. So, what does Control Shift C do? Well, it copies not the text, but the formatting. So, let's say I set this up with the formatting I want, and I want that same formatting down here. I highlight the formatting that I want to copy, hold Control, hold Shift, tap C. It just copied the formatting. Now I go down and I highlight where I want to paste that formatting. I don't know why I would want to do this in this case, but I hold Control, Shift, and V. And look, it copy-pasted not the words, but the formatting from the title down here as well. I'm going to undo that. Now there are many more Microsoft Word keyboard shortcuts out there, and if there's interest in this video, I'll make another more advanced Microsoft Word keyboard shortcuts tutorial. But these really are my favorites and the ones that I use the most. So thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial to be helpful, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media accounts like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And when you do subscribe, please click the bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified whenever I post another video, and watch for another video from me at least every Monday. If you'd like to support my YouTube channel, consider becoming a patron of mine through my Patreon account, and you'll find links to that in the description below.